Thank you for watching this week's episode of Devar Malchus, Royal Words in English by the Lubavitcher Rebbe. This week's Parshas Matos Mase, second of Menachem Av, 57, 51, 1991. We are on page 319. Thank you for tuning in. On the special matters of his holy Shabbos, of this holy Shabbos, in which we finish the book of Bamidbar, numbers on it, the fourth book of the Torah, whose end is also the end of the entire Torah, the first four books for the fifth book of the Torah is repetition of the Torah, which represents, or repeats rather, and includes the four preceding books. And after it we declare in a loud voice and joyously, Chazak, Chazak, Vini Chazak, strong, be strong, and we will strengthen ourselves, which expresses the strength, might of the Jewish people in all matters of Torah, to the extent the strength is threefold, hazak, hazak, v'znis, hazak, for which the virtue and completeness, something repeated three times, make hazaka, is strong and steadfast. And we must understand that the connection and relevance of the completing of the fourth book into the Torah to the content of the time. For the fourth book is always completed during the Shabbos of the three weeks and in some years, like this year, the first Shabbos of the nine days, for seemingly the time of the three weeks, and especially the nine days, destruction and exile is connected to a state of weakness, in holiness and complete opposite of Hazak, Hazak, Veniz, Hazak. Seemingly, we must say that this is actually the reason, since this time is connected to a state of weakness, and the need for strengthening of Hazak, Hazak, Veniz, Hazak is more evident. However, it appears to be more logical that strength itself is connected to the content of time and not to the strength is the opposite of the content of the time and the time emphasizes the need for which it lacks. As is emphasized in the name of the Shabbos, which name shows the content and essence of the matter, which is called Shabbos Hazak, meaning the content of the Shabbos in the three weeks and this year also in the nine days is the strength of Hazak Hazak, the Nis Hazak, of our actions and service in fulfilling Torah and mitzvahs, the content of the four books. And this will be understood by way of preference and explanation in the content of Hazak Hazak Venis Hazak to the content of the Parsha for which we complete the four books. Parshas Mato Masai, or Mato Mas, Masai, which include more specifically Hazak of Matos and Hazak of Masai, and the Hazak of Matos Masay unite as one, strength and power. Hazak, and especially three times Hazak, 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 Venis Hazak, is seemingly connected to Matos. Specifically for the Mate, staff, denotes strength and might in an unchangeable matter, as a staff in the literal sense, which is strong and hard to the extent that Mate notes reign and authority, as wording of the verse strong Matos, staffs of the scepter of rulers, whereas Masse travels, walking and traveling, Vise, and he traveled, walking and traveling from place to place when one does stay when one does not stay in his place, rather walks and travels to another place to the extent of a true traveling <coughs> as such as he is completely uprooted from his previous place to an incomparable place, seemingly opposite of the concept of strength and might, Hazak in the unchangeable manner. And the fact that the proclaiming of Hazak, Hazak, Venis Hazak is always also when Mato, Masay are together at the end of the Parsha, Masay specifically shows the content of Hazak, Hazak, Venis Hazak is related mainly to Parshas Masay. Only in some years, Parshas Matos is also added to it. And when we say the explanation of this, Hazaka, which is the number three, three makes three Hazaka, and especially a triple Hazaka, Hazak, Hazak, Venis Hazak, denote strength even when there is opposition, as is known that the number one denotes a state in which the start there is only good and holiness. The number two denotes division and argument to the existence of opposite and the number three or opposition, existence of opposition. And the number three denotes the strength of holiness also in a state of opposition. And the phenomenon of strength and might of the number three strength is in the state of opposition itself has two manners. Emphasis on the above meaning the strength through drawing down the light of the holiness from above to below in every place, also in a place where there is opposition due to the great virtue of light that is boundless. Emphasis on the below physicality that the service of raising 
that below, from below to above, is a manner of strength and might, to nullify the opposition, moreover, to transform it to holiness. And these two manners are alluded to the Hazak of the Parshas Matomase. The Hazak of Parshas Matos is the strength and might through the above, and, the, and Moshe spoke to the heads of the Matos. Staffs, tribes, this is what Hashem has commanded. The strength of having drawn, a, a drawing down Hashem's command, also where there is opposition. And the Hazak of, of Parshas Masay is the strength and might over the below. These are Masay, travels of the Jewish people who left the land of Egypt. The strength that is in the service of the Jewish people in rectifying and raising the below, that despite the different states and levels and the travels in the desert, the below is correlation with the state of, be, of, of, be, of the below in the amount of opposition remaining. Nevertheless, there is a constant journey of leaving Egypt, Mitzrayim, the Mitzrayim, confines of the below and going to the land of Israel, broadness of holiness. And according to this, we explain that the connection of Hazak to Masay, specifically since strength in a place where there is opposition, is more emphasized in the replication of the below, travels of the Jewish people who left the land of Egypt, since not only does the boundless strength of the light of holiness come down and illuminate every place without taking into consideration the existence of opposition, rather moreover that there is an involvement with the opposition of, of, with the opposing side to completely nullify it, including to transform it to holiness. And the true completeness of Azak is in the union of Mato Masse as one, the strength of Matos, as the virtue of revelation of the light of holiness that is beyond limits, however, being that this strength is due to the above and does not have the revel relevance to the existence of the below, namely the opposition of the of, on the contrary, is not given any significance. Therefore, the below itself is not transformed. The strength of Masse has the virtue of the nullification to the extent of the transformation of the opposition, but being that the emphasis is on the below, which does not have boundless might of the above. Hence, it is limited, and it is possible for there to be change and for it not to last. Therefore, the true completeness of Azak is the union of Matos Masse as one, when there are two virtues, the strength of drawing down the light, which is above limit, as well as the strength that is the nullification and transformation of the opposition by elevating the below. And both of them together, with the nullification of the opposition through elevating the below, is in a permanent and eternal manner. And may we add that the union of Matos Masse is in the fourth Aliyah, specifically that we read the fourth Aliyah at the end of Parshas Matos and beginning the Parshas Masse, and this brings about the completeness of Azak of the Parshas Mato Masse as they are combined together at the end of the fourth book of the Torah. Although the number three denotes strength, Hazak also in a state of opposition. However, since it is continuation to one and two, and the relation them to them is evident, meaning to say that although it connects the one, the above whose aspect is drawing down from above to below, with the two, the below whose aspect is raising from below to above, nevertheless, the connection of the two aspects, above and below, drawing down and raising up, is evident in it. And therefore, the true completeness of strength through the above and through the below together is in the fourth aliyah, the special level by itself, not a continuation to one and two in which is emphasized the concept of being settled in a complete way, like a chair of four legs, which is settled state more than a chair of three legs, and denotes strength and might, a nullification of opposition in a permanent and eternal boundless manner. And may we say that the concept is more emphasized in the relation of the fourth to the fifth, since on Shabbos Parshas, Matoma say, the end of the fourth book of the Torah, we start to read at Mincha, the fifth book of the Torah, and an extra edition this year, that the end of the fourth book of the Torah is in the month of Menachem Av, the fifth month, not, in, not as in some years that Matoma say is read in Shabbos, blessing Menachem Av, at the end of the month of Talmud, as is known that the fifth is the highest level, which is above limit and transcends the gradational descent of the revelations of Hashem the fifth to paro, paro, an idiom of Ispiru, burst forth, meaning that all the godly lights burst forth and are revealed from him and through his power specifically. The connection of the two aspects of drawing down and raising up 
content of the union of Matoma Se and the Hazak ah of the number three through the uniting of one and two is accomplished in the most possible completeness. According to this, we can explain the connection of Hazak, Hazak, and this Hazak on the fourth book, which is completed on Shabbos part Shah Matoma Se to the content of the time of the three weeks and this year in the nine days and by way of preference that the purpose of the destruction and exile, the content of the Ben HaMitzorim is in order to reach the virtue and completeness of the building of the future base of Migdash and the future redemption a re virtue that is emphasized in the concept of Hazaka, the third base of Migdash and the third redemption and the explanation of this, the virtue of the future base of Migdash, the sanctuary of Hashem, your hands have established with your two hands when Hashem will rule forever and ever in the time to come when the entire kingdom is His, was already said in the Song of the Seas in regard to the building of the base of Migdash that they should have built immediately upon entering the land as the words of our sages. Had the Jewish people merited immediately when the heels of their feet ascended from the sea, they would have entered the land and then entered in the land by Moshe would have been an eternal redemption with no exile following it and the building of the internal base of Migdash with no destruction following it. And may we say that since all the matters of the Torah are true and eternal, including also the matters mentioned as a first thought, as in our case, had they merited, indeed there is also now, after the destruction of exile, the concept of an eternal redemption and internal base of Migdash in a manner of strength and might, only that their strength is only in the realm of the above, and therefore in the realm of our world below there could be and there is a state of destruction and exile. On the other hand, the strength of the redemption of the building of the base of Migdash and the realm of below itself does not suffice either, for the below is limited, so the strength it is limited and not in an eternal manner. And therefore there is need for the union of the two virtues, strength of the redemption and the building of the base of Migdash from the perspective of above and from the perspective of below united for then there is an accomplished an eternal redemption and an eternal base of Migdash. And this is the difference, difference between the two base of Migdash, the first base of Migdash and the second base of Migdash, the first and the second redemption in comparison to the third base of Migdash and the third redemption. The first base of Migdash, number one, which was built by Shlomo, about whom it is said, and Shlomo sat on the godly throne, he ruled with the spirit power through connecting to Hashem. Its main aspect was from above, in a matter of drawing down from above to below, the service of the Siddiquim, and since it was not connected that much with, and was not from the initiative of the below, it was eventually destroyed and did not stand. The second base of Migdash, number two, which was built by those who came up from Babylon, in the days of Ezra, its main aspect was below in a matter of raising from above to below, rather from below to above, the service of Tshuva. And therefore it had a greater connection to the world below. It was greater than the first base of Migdash. As it says, the honor of this latter base of Migdash will be greater than the first in structure in years. But on the other hand, being that it was physically virtue, which is limited, it was also eventually destroyed and did not stand what more for a longer time than the absence of the first base of Migdash. And in addition also when it did not stand and even have the virtue and completeness of the first base of Migdash, a spiritual virtue since five things were missing in it. And the innovation of the third base of Migdash in the third base of Migdash number three is in the union of above and below as one. Therefore it will be in a manner of strength and might in the most possible completeness and eternal redemption, Shir Hadash, new song, masculine, in redemption with no exile following it, and an eternal base of Migdash. And may we say that the virtue of the strength of the third base of Migdash and the third redemption due to the union of above and below is more emphasized in the fact that the future redemption is sometimes referred to also as the fourth redemption and sometimes the fifth redemption, a special level by itself, and since it is not in connection to the one and to the two above and below, it's emphasized that it is also the framework of above and below, and therefore through it there is a union of above and below. And this is emphasized on Shabbat Hazak, on the fourth, on the fourth book of the Torah, in the days of the Ben Hatzorim, in the proclamation of Hazak Hazak, and this Hazak, a triple Hazak for, for Shabbos, Parshas, Matoma say is hinted that the Hazak of the third base of Migdash and the third redemption, which comes after and through the union of the first base of Migdash and the second base of Migdash, after their absence due to the destruction of the days of the Bain Hametzarim, through 
the union of the two virtues of both of them, the first base of Mingdash and the second base of Mingdash, above and below, drawing down and raising up, as is hinted at the connection of the union of Matomase. And this union is in the fourth aliyah, moreover, and mainly through that we finish the fourth book, and soon afterward, in the time of Mincha, we start the fifth book, which denotes a spa, which denotes a separate level, which is completely beyond the framework of above and below, through which there is the union of above and below in the future base of Migdash and the future redemption. And may we say that this detail, that the details of the numbers related to the future base of Migdash. And may we say that the details of the numbers related to the future base of Migdash and the future redemption are hinted also in the time when we read Parshas Matomah say and proclaim Hazak Hazak Venis Hazak on the fourth book in the three weeks, hints to the virtue of the third base of Migdash and the third redemption in the fourth month in the years Parshas Matoma say is read at the end of the month of Talmud, the fourth redemption and the fifth month as this year Parshas Matoma say is read in the fifth month and the fifth redemption. And this is also the strong empowerment for all matters of Torah and mitzvahs as mentioned above, especially regarding our deeds and service throughout the time of exile after the destruction and the Jewish people being exiled from their land in the Beit Samitzurim. And since through this we retain through this we attain the strength of the true and complete redemption, an eternal redemption and an eternal base of Migdash. An additional matter in this Shabbos connected to Arab Shabbos, who in whose toils on Arab Shabbos will eat on and one who eat toils on Arab Shabbos will eat on Shabbos, one thing for which he made an effort. Hence the Shabbos is connected with Arab Shabbos, which occurred on Rosh Chodesh Menachem Av, mentioned explicitly in the Torah of our Parshas, I say that Aaron the Kohen ascended to Hor Hahar, and he passed away there in the fifth month on the first day of the month, in the yard site of Aaron HaKohen. And by way of introduction, this matter, that the day of the passing is explicitly written in the Torah, in the fifth month on the first day of the month, is unique in the fact that we do not find this anywhere else in the whole entire Torah not regarding Moshe Rabbeinu, by their sister Miriam, by the three patriarchs, etc. And it makes sense to say that in the content of this day, the fifth month of the first day of the month is hinted the general service of Arna Cohen, and therefore on that day was accomplished the culmination and completeness of his service, all his deeds, Torah study and service, that he toiled all the days of his life, is revealed and illuminated from above to below, works, salvations, in the midst of the land on the day he passed away, as will be explained. And the unique matter of Aaron as we as we see from the day of his passing, the culmination and completeness of his service. The verse says, and the whole congregation saw that Aaron passed away and all the Jewish people mourned Aaron for 30 days. The men and the women, since Aaron would, be, pursue, would pursue peace and bring love. And in the words of the Mishnah, be like Aaron, be one that loves peace and pursues peace, loves the creation and brings them close to Torah. And in continuation to this, it said that the Canaanites heard. They heard that Aaron had passed away. And, in our, and similarly, in our Parsha, then, that they heard that Aaron had passed away and that the clouds of glory went away. And similarly, in our Parsha, that in continuation to Aaron passing, it says the Canaanites heard to teach you that Aaron's passing meant it was heard that the clouds of glory went away. And in explaining the connection of the two matters emphasized in the passing of Aaron and the culmination and completeness of his service, pursuing peace, the clouds of glory, we may say the special virtue of the clouds of glory that came to merit Aaron in comparison to the manna and water, which were given the whole nation in the merit of Moshe and Miriam, that the manna was given with a measure and limit, an omer per person, the water, although it was not with a measure and limit, yet they came in a manner of division to each and every individual, whereas the clouds of glory were in a surrounding nature which transcends division. They surrounded and protected all of the Jewish people as one. And this is also the content of loves peace and pursues peace and loves the creations and brings them close to Torah due to the emphasis of the essential point of unity of all the Jewish people which is above division. And may we add that this matter is hinted also in the name Ar, Har, Mar, Mountain, Ha, Aran is the concept of love. The preface of the letter Aleph, Aran, symbolizes the source of love. Aleph, which comes before the Har mountain, namely source and the level of Pele, wonder. And therefore the love is abundant love. And this is diff the difference between Avram and Aran, that although both of them personify kindness and love, however, the traits of kindness and love of Avraham is within the limitation of Seder Hashtabah. 
and the traits of love of Aaron is kindness and abundant love which transcends Ishtalos. And may we also say the concept of the great love is hinted also in the order of the letters of the word Aaron. Aleph He is an acronym of Alava, love, and the Resh is an acronym of Rabba, abundant and extended Nun. Aran symbolizes the drawing down and abroad and abroad and abroad symbolizes the drawing down and abroad of the aspect of abundant love even below to the Jewish people who are on a low level who are similar to the level of the Torah which is extended below the line and it is known that the letters of the Torah have three categories letters extending above the line within the line and below the line and similarly regarding the Jewish people who are connected compared to the letters of the Torah as it is known the Jewish people who are in general divided into 600 thousand called Yisroel, acronym for the words Yesh, Shashim, Rabo, Asios, La Torah, that there are 600,000 letters in the Torah, and the, and the point being that Aaron's level is connected to the revelation which is above division, and therefore in it is power to connect and unify all the details of the division of the Jewish people equally, and more in detail is the content of Aaron's service is emphasized the unification of the two aspects of drawing down and raising up, similar to the union of Matoma Se, as mentioned above, due to the high level which transcends the above and below. One of the main matters of Aaron the Kohen is Birkas HaKohenim, the priestly blessing. It is a biblical positive mitzvah. The Kohen should bless Jewish people every day while raising their hands, which is also done in the present time, outside of the Holy Land of, of every biblical holiday and in the Holy Land as customary in several holy congregations every day. And at each prayer of the daily prayers besides Mincha because of the concern of intoxication. And it is known that in Birkas Kohenim there are two virtues of blessing and prayer. United the virtue of blessing which draws down grace from above to below and the virtue of prayer which is an arousal from below to above since it, Birkas Kohenim, is from the level which transcends the division of drawing down and raising up above and below, and therefore it unites both of them together. And may we say the union of the two aspects in drawing down and raising up, blessing and prayer through a third aspect, which is above both of them, is hinted also in the fact that Birkas Kohenim is a trifold blessing. And according to this, we may explain the hint in the number of Aaron's years. Aaron was 123 years old at the time of his passing in Hor Haran, and in addition to the completeness of 120 years as the years of Moshe of life, and we would say, Today my year, days and years are complete, as is written, and his mankind days shall be 120 years. He lived an additional three, 123 years. This is the number of three years more than the complete of 120 years. It's hinted his general service in uniting the two aspects to the third aspect, which is above them both. According to this, we can explain that the connection to the level of service of power to the day of his passing in the fifth month, the first day of the month, fifth month is connected to the fifth level which is above the division of the Seder Hashanah, the fifth to Para, that all the godly lights burst forth and are revealed from him as mentioned above and also on the first day of the month within the fifth month itself is connected to the level of unity which transcends division as is emphasized also in the content of Rosh Chodesh one day which is transcends division and therefore it includes all the days of the month and may we say that the fact that the Torah writes explicitly to Aaron's passing the Kilm culmination and completeness of his service was in the fifth month on the first day of the month hint to the main aspect of all his deeds Torah and service that he did all the days of his life one first that transcends division and unifies all the divisions of level both in the union of aspects of service of drawing down and raising up Birkas Kohenim and also in the unity of the specific level that are in the Jewish people emphasized in the clouds of glory which were in his merit as well as the special service of love peace and pursuit peace which all this is accomplished by a level that is above and beyond the divisions of level, the fifth level, above and beyond the third level, and even the fourth level, where the connection of the two aspects is evident, as mentioned above. And when we add that the fifth month on the first day of the month, which includes all the days of the month, is a preparation for the all-embracing service, I am for my beloved, and my beloved is for me, raising from below to above, I am for my beloved, and drawing down from above to below, my beloved is for me, which starts on the Rosh Chodesh Ilil, I am for my beloved, and continues to the month of Tishrei, my beloved is for me, due to the essential point of unity which transcends division. In the fifth month on the first day of the month, which through it the union of the two aspects is accomplished, and more in detail that the two level in love, namely, 
the two levels in love, namely from above, from below to above, and from above to below. I am for my beloved, and my beloved is for me, which my beloved denotes the concept of love after come after the preference of the abundant love, which is above Hishtadalus, the kindness of Aaron, whose day of passing is the fifth day, is the fifth month on the first day of the month. One of the instructions from the above with regard to action, presently on Shabbos Hazak, of the four books of the four fourth book upon which we start also the fifth book and especially when it occurs in the fifth month in which it is emphasized the strength of the future base of Migdash in the future redemption for it is, it is not only a third redemption rather also a fourth redemption including a fifth redemption as it is completely above and beyond the division of levels of the first and second base of Migdash the first and second redemption is mentioned above there must be a special emphasis regarding the essential point of unity which transcends division and this is expressed in actual deed through going in the ways of Aaron, whose day of passing in the fifth month on the first day of the month, as the instruction of the Mishnah in the tractate Avos, be of the disciples of Aaron who loves peace and pursues peace, loves the creation and brings it to closer to Torah, through revealing the essential part of unity which transcends division. And in more detail, based on the precise expression of the Mishnah, be of the disciples of Aaron, be a commandment that it is not only a story regarding pious behavior as in several matters in Tractate Avos, rather a command and instruction that we may say that the expression be includes also granting permission and the ability to be of the disciples of Aaron, of the disciples of Aaron specifically in plural and not a student, that his effort in, con in conducting himself similar to Aaron is together with many other people and through this there is a greater addition in this due to the concept of jealousy among sages greatly increased wisdom greatly increased specifically which a truly great increase in boundless meaning not only in a matter of with your, all your might your might although his friend's eye is limited rather that it is a boundless matter also in his friend's eye the other disciples of Aaron to the extent that it is connected to the true might boundlessness and may we add the emphasis of the connection of Avis Yisrael love your fellow Jew to the future redemption not only because the nullification of the exile is by nullifying the reason for the exile, which also which came due to the opposite of Avis Yisrael, for as we stand after the completion of our deeds and service throughout the time of exile, after completing all the 42 travels in the desert of nations, and we are already standing on the Yarden of Jericho, the level of Mashiach, whose mora be doing, sense and correct decision, on the threshold of the redemption, it is certain that the reason for the exile has already been rectified, and therefore the emphasis of Avis Israel is as a taste, moreover, a beginning of the true and complete redemption, which is connected to the essential point of unity, which trans is trans which is transcends division, emphasized in the unity of Jewish people from the perspective of the aspects of Yehida, the fifth level, which is each one of the Jewish people equally a spark of the soul of Mashiach the Yehida of the Jewish people in general. And accordingly to this, we may add that also in the explanation and bring them close to Torah, th this means bringing them close to the Torah study of the future redemption. New secrets in Torah will be revealed by me. And may we connect this with the words of the Mishnah in Tractate Avos in the chapter of Shabbos, Rabbi Shimshon plays, says, be careful with the reading of the Shema and with prayer. And Rabbi Shimon, or our Mishnah is Rabbi Shimon ben Neseno, who is counted beforehand among the five disciples of Rabbi Yonatan ben Zaka. And in continuation come their statements. And they said three things. And he is called here simply Rabbi Shimon to hint his connection to Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai. For wherever it says Rabbi Shimon, without specifying which one refers to Shimon bar Yochai. In this in that his Torah study is his occupation, including and especially the learning of the inner dimension of the Torah, like Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the master of the Zohar, as we find that Rabbi Shimon ben Nesano began an exponent on the Masei Merkavel, the ancestral mystical exposition. And the reason why Rabbi Shimon emphasized be careful with the reading of the Shema and with prayer Although seemingly he should have emphasized be careful in learning of Torah in the matter of his Torah study is his occupation, for the conduct of his Torah is his occupation as such that one does not need to stop for the reading of the Shema and prayer 
it is special conduct relevant only to certain special people, even among those whose Torah is their occupation. And therefore, Rabbi Shimon needs to warn his disciples and all the Jewish people that they should be careful in the reading of the Shema and prayer, as we explained in length elsewhere. And we can explain the precision of the expression of be careful in the reading of the Shema and prayer, to hear careful, specifically an idiom of Zohar radiance, and like the Zohar, the radiance of the heavens, that although the main phenomenon of radiation, of radiance and light is accomplished by the learning of Torah, Torah is light. And especially when the learning is a learning is in a matter that his Torah is his occupation, that his whole existence is Torah is light. Nevertheless, Rabbi Shimon makes an effort for the good of those who have not yet reached the level of his Torah is his occupation, that also they will have the phenomenon of radiance and light throughout the reading of the Shema. and prayers to the extent that they will eventually also reach the radiance and light of his Torah is his occupation, similar to the content of saying, be of the disciples of Aaron, love the creations, including also mere creation, and bring them close to Torah. And may we say that the instruction and empowerment are be for being careful in the reading of Shema and prayer by Rabbi Shimon, whose Torah is his occupation, namely that Rabbi Shimon, whose Torah is his occupation, infuses his radiance and light, the radiance of the heavens and the reading of the Shema and prayer is drawn forth from the level of unity which is above and beyond division, which through it is accomplished the union of the two aspects of service, Torah drawing down from above to below and prayer raising from below to above. And may we add that within the learning of the Torah, his Torah is his occupation itself. There are two matters of drawing down and raising up, as known saying in the great Rabbi, Rabbi Hillel of Par Parich, regarding the Hasidic teachings of the Psalm ascetic and similar regarding all of our Rebbe's that the saying of the Hasidic discourse in a manner that the saying of a Hasidic discourse is the is in a manner of the divine presence speaks from his throat as was given at Sinai whereas with the explanation and discussion about a discourse even by the one who delivered the discourse himself after the delivering of the discourse which is not at the high level itself meaning that within the Torah itself there are two manners of drawing down from above to below as it was given at Sinai and raises from above to below explanation and discussion within the human mind similar to the general difference between Torah, drawing down and the reading of Shema and prayer rising up. And the above spoken is connected also to another timely matter regarding making Siyum celebration during the nine days. In addition to the general custom of making Siyums during the nine days in order to increase in the joy of the Torah, the commandments of Hashem are just the gladden and hearts, joy for the completing of the Torah and Simcha's Torah, and similarly upon the completing of a tractate, when we see a young rabbi completing his tractate, we made a festival day for the rabbis, including also incre in increasing Sadako in the law of Torah, and in Sadako, which hastens the redemption, an effort should be made, especially this year, in making seums in a matter of vast national in a, in a manner of a vast nation glorifies the king, namely to unite many Jewish people in the joy of completing of the Torah, including also small children, not only small in knowledge, rather also small in years, who are not capable of understanding, similar to the Siyum of Era of Pesach, regarding which it is the Jewish custom to bring also very young firstborns. And note that the Siyum of Era of Pesach is not merely an example, rather an actual also related to the seum of the nine days, the seum of Heir of Pesach is a preparation for the redemption of Pesach, and the seum of the nine days are a preparation for the future redemption, which is, as the days you left Egypt, I will show them wonders. And with extra emphasis this year, Hey, Tav, Shin, Nun, Aleph, acronym for the words meaning, it will be the year I will show them wonders when we will stand on the thresholds of, of the redemption. And may it be the will of Hashem that the speaking and accepting of good resolutions in all the above will hasten and bring actuality, actually the strength of the third base of Migdash and the third base of Migdash in a revealed way in the most literal sense. And simply that in addition to the fact that we already finished the first, the, all the details of the 42 travels in the desert of the nations in the time of the exile, and we already stand on the Yarden of Jericho, on the other side of the Yarden of Jericho, on the east of it, we will cross the Yarden into the west and enter Eretz Yisrael, and in Eretz Yisrael itself, we will go to the west, to Yerushalayim, to the holy city, and to the third base of Migdash, and to the Holy of Holies. 
in the part of the base of Mingdash in which there is an ark and tablets. And those who dwell in the dust will rise and sing, and Moshe and Aaron, the ones whose yard site is on, Rosh Hashanah, Menachem, Ad, among them, and the righteous and the leaders of the Jewish people among them, and my revered father-in-law, the Rebbe leader of our generation among them, together with the souls and the bo and bodies of all the Jewish people in this generation, with all our young and our old, with our sons and our daughters, and each and every one of you, O oh, the Jewish people, shall be collected, and every one together will learn the new insights of the Torah that will be revealed by me. These are the words that Moshe, the first Redeemer, who was connected to the last Redeemer, spoke to all the Jewish people. These specifically he shows with his finger and says these actually and in an open revelation and literally immediately. Thank you for tuning in. Zai Gudzun, good Arab Shabbos.